Hi ladies, it's just Claire. As promised, I'm just putting this tutorial, well it's not a tutorial, it's a video together, just to show you ahead of some of the tutorials I am going to put together, some of the kit that I use for colouring some of Joanna's designs. These are colour pencils. I will try and do some other uh, videos on kits in terms of watercolours and pastels, but let me just show you the, the colouring pencils and the felt tips for now. I know it looks a lot and when I actually arranged it on the floor it's a lot more than I thought I had but please bear in mind it's the sum collation of three years of this hobby so it has taken quite a while to, to get it together and some of the items you can pick up quite cheaply. So let me start with the actual colour pencils as you can see my absolute favourite as I probably think some of you know are Prismacolors. This is the largest set however if you've not used them before you can get smaller packs with less pencils if you wanted to try out a cheaper version before you go for the for the bigger pack. I've used a lot of brands, a lot of brands, Faber-Castell, Ergo, Soft, Derwent, um, you name it, I've tried it, Marco. In terms of sheer vibrancy, depth of colour, ease of blendability, for me personally, these are by far and away the best pencils. Here we've got some drawing pencils. They are Faber-Castell, but to be honest, I just use most of the time a very cheap 2B hardness pencil if I'm adding some extra designs to Joanna's pages. You can see that these range in hardness, I think, from something like um, 8B up to 2 or 4H, something like that. But you really don't need that many. You just need one standard HB pencil, to be honest. These beauties look like pastels. They're not. They are Prismacolor Art Sticks. They are actually made from the same waxy inner material that the standard Prismacolor pencils are. And what that allows you to do is, for backgrounds especially, you can cover a, a, lot, a much larger area a lot more quickly and efficiently than you could just using um, a single pencil. These I picked up quite recently. Um, didn't know they existed for quite a while, but you can see that, well, they're called Prismacolor Very Thins, and they have, you can see, a lot finer nib than the standard Prismacolor pencils. And what that allows you to do, they're slightly harder as well in terms of waxiness. A lot of Joanna's designs are very much detail, have a lot of detail in them. And in terms of getting into those small spaces in the designs, these are excellent for colouring in, in, in small spaces, basically. The 24 colours match some of the 24 colours that are in the box so you can use the same colours if you're doing the same leaf which has a larger area and some very detailed areas. In terms of felt tips, um, Stedler Tri Plus Fine Liners are my favourite. You may have seen some videos Bex Harris has produced which she shows you how to use these Tri Plus Fine Liners very 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 effectively. A lot of felt pens don't blend, these are excellent at blending on paper and they're what I would recommend as well. Then I have some anonymous glitter gel pens. Always nice if you need a little bit of extra sparkle on your page. And these I would highly recommend. Um, I think they was, they're not very expensive. I think the pack was around about seven or eight pounds. Uh, just from Amazon, which a lot of this stuff is to be honest, you can see that they're black pigment liners and they come in a variety of nib sizes. And what I use them for is if I'm drawing some extra design work onto the page, I'll draw it in pencil first and then go over the pencil with this pigment liner. And it just gives a, a crisper edge to the extra design that you're putting on the page. The reason they're so good is you can then, once you put the pigment liner over the top of the pencil, you can erase the original pencil from underneath and they don't smudge at all. Really, really good. Very, very useful those. Then we have um, a standard colour wheel and you can pick these up very cheaply online, I think a pound or two pounds and they are very very useful at showing you which colours work well together so I use it quite a lot in terms of when I'm planning what colour families I'm going to use in a particular design. What you'll, what you'll get to know is if you have one of these that opposites on the colour wheel are colours that attract one another. So you can see that yellow and violet on the opposite side of the wheel, if you put those together on the page, they would work really well. Underneath we have a standard Prismacolor blender pencil. And we also have this liquid called Gamsol, which you can, it's liquid and you just dab it onto a cloth and you use it the same as you would a blender pencil. 
To be honest, the Prisoner colour pencils blend that well on their own. I, I've not really used it. I find that the Prisoner colour pencils on their own and the Prisoner blender is, is more than enough. Underneath we have a good old fashioned compass. Always useful if I'm adding suns or moons in the background. Uh, very nice to create a perfectly circular circle. The gadget underneath is a pencil extender. Some of my older Prismacolor pencils are very stumpy indeed. This just helps you get the very most out of your pencils before you have to replace them. Underneath I have two erasers. The grey one is a sand eraser. It's got a fairly gritty texture and is really, uh, I find, better than normal erasers because it takes colour off the page but without damaging the paper. It takes it off um, a lot more efficiently than a standard um, eraser does. This, what looks like a white pen, is actually a Tombow uh, Mono Zero eraser. And you can see from the tip that it's very fine. And what that means is if you've got a very, very small or detailed area that you want to erase, it's a lot easier to use that than a standard size eraser. Underneath, I use these quite a lot. Um, the top one is a Sakura Jelly Roll White Gel Pen. I've used it mostly for creating wave effects on ocean backgrounds. Again, if you've seen Bex Harris's videos, you'll see how she's used them very effectively in pointillism and which is very small dot designs. And then underneath we have some very cheap, just metallic gel pens, bronze, silver and gold. In terms of pencil sharpness, the back one is probably a little bit controversial. It's battery driven, so you just put the pencil in the top and it automatically sharpens it. A lot of people think this can damage pencils and to be honest, sometimes it can. And when you're working with expensive pencils, sometimes it can be, you know, you, you wanna protect them a little bit, which is why I've got this standard Faber-Castell pencil sharpener here with various size holes. Here we've got a white chalk marker, a stationary island white chalk marker. I use this to create clouds in the background. It dabs on and when you uh, blend over and dab it slightly with cotton buds it makes really nice cloud effects which hopefully you'll see on some of the videos to come. The black pen is a Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen. It's a brush tip and what you can do is if you want a little bit of uh, clear translucent glittered areas over your completed design this works really well just to add that little bit of extra sparkle. Over on this side I've got a very cheap craft knife set. Um, if I've finished a design and I really, really like it and I'm gonna gift it, it's the easiest and uh, kindest way to remove pages from the book. Books are precious, I know some of you wouldn't do that. I don't particularly like doing it either, but if, as I say, if I am gifting one of the finished pieces, it's the kindest way to the book to actually get the, the page f removed. Then I've got a standard um, I think I had this at school, to be honest, a standard um, just ruler, which is very useful if you're drawing horizon lines or extra trees. The blue uh, item is actually a ruler as well. It's a flexible, bendable ruler, and you can see that it, it'll bend into any shape. So if you wanted an S shape or a rainbow shape, it's very, very good in terms of making symmetrical, non-standard shapes. Underneath, you can see I've got some standard white paper. Always useful to have this under your book to test colours before you put them on the page. Just have a test sheet handy. And then last but not least, you'll need a colouring book. I've got many colouring books and I have to say that Joanna's are my absolute favourites. This book in particular is, is, is absolutely brilliant. And if you've seen some of the stuff that I've posted that I've finished recently, it's, it's from the magical jungle. So I think that's about it. Any questions, just um, please bounce me a line on, on Facebook and hopefully I'll be able to produce some video tutorials for you very soon. You've given me some great feedback on tips and tricks that you'd like to see, so hopefully that's what I'll be doing very soon. Take care, ladies, and I'll speak to you soon.